G'day everyone, it's Dean from Australia and I thought I'd have a crack at this, if you excuse the pun, uh, eggplant build for 2019. A bit late to the party, um, have work on but I've got a bit of leave now so a bit of time to do it and hopefully I'll get it done before the, uh, the cut off date in April. So the kit I've chosen is the Hasegawa F4 Phantom 2 in uh, 1 to 1 egg scale and I'm going to do it up in the uh, United States Air Force um, Southeast Asian scheme that they used in the 60s and 70s. I bought myself some uh, brand new AK paints which I've never used before. These are the real colour ones. So I'm looking forward to giving it a go. Okay, so here's our Phantom. You can see I've uh, done a little bit of work on it. I've just put some uh, Vallejo plastic putty on the model. It's sort of my favourite putty these days. Um, the glue I used worked well. That was the uh, Tamiya um, CA Cement Easy Sanding. And that's gone on and that's really strengthened the joints and everything, but it didn't quite fill everything in properly. So I just went and got some Vallejo and put that over it as well. So we'll give it a sand. Okay, so that's blowing off the loose dust, but I've got a, still quite a bit of uh, dust from the sanding there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull over with some wax and grease remover. This is the stuff that uh, the automotive fellas use when they're uh, wiping down cars and things before they put a coat of paint on. And just put a bit into a towel here and then you just wipe it on the model. And it works brilliantly at cleaning the surface of the model before you do any painting or priming. Another added bonus is it will remove most of the uh, oils and things they use when they're doing the injection moulding. So I, I still wash my models as a rule, uh, just to be on the safe side with a bit of soap and water before I start building them. But if you can't be bothered doing that, and you just want to be extra careful, then this works. Okay, so we're just up to the point now of being ready to, to reprime the model. Now normally when I'm priming I use um, a primer that some people get very emotional about which is the Vallejo branded surface primer. Um, I use it and I have been using it for about three four years and it was good results. Things I like about it first of all is that it, uh, it sprays easily, it settles very nicely, and gives a nice smooth finish. And in Australia, at least, it's quite cheap to buy. It's probably one of the cheapest primers I can get my hands on for models. The downside to um, the Vallejo is it does take a long time to cure and to harden on the model. So if you want to sand your model, for example, you've got to wait at least 24, ending up to 36 hours before you can do that. And for some folks, that's just way too long. 
Um, the other downside is, is if you do put paint on top of the surface primer before it's properly cured, it has got a nasty habit of uh, lifting off the model. And I have found at least one kit where it just didn't like the plastic and it wouldn't adhere properly to it. I've only found one like that, which is the Polar Lights kit. But um, yeah, other people have reported that problem too. Uh, but generally speaking, I've been really, really happy with it. But in situations like today where I want to sort of uh, get the primer on and perhaps put some paint on later today, I don't want to wait uh, a day or more before I do that. I've been experimenting with some other primers and the one that um, has really won me over is this one, which is Mission Models Primer. This is an acrylic uh, primer and it works with their thinner. I've got here somewhere. Um, at least I thought I had their thinner. There we go. Let's see, thinner. And this, uh, according to their instructions, activates the primer. So you use a, roughly about one drop of this to 10 drops of that. It goes on really nicely. Uh, it behaves very similar to Vallejo as far as um, leveling itself out, out nicely. It's got a nice finish on it when it's done. Slight sheen to it. Downside to this stuff, it's dear as poison. It's even more expensive than the standard mission model paints, which already were quite expensive. But it does work really, really nicely, and I don't have to leave uh, the model for over a day to, to dry before I can paint. So I have put this stuff on in the past and actually put paint on half an hour, 40 minutes after I've done it. Probably not going to do that today because um, here in Tassie today it's, it's fairly cold. So I'll probably give it a good two or three hours, but um, it works well. And if you don't mind the cost, uh, it's quite good. In fact, I've been having an about possibly making this my main primer just because of the fact that it works um, very well and has similar sort of um, finish to what the Vallejo does. But cost is the thing I'm still not sure about. So anyway, use it. Wait, um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 drops of primer and I'll put two drops of their thinner, no more. One of the things about Mission Model paints, which I must do a review of at some point, is that the paint appears much thicker than some other brands out there when you're working with it, but it sprays really, really nicely. So I've got the airbrush set to about 15 psi when I go to spray this. Okay, that's good enough. So I'll see if I can put the model somewhere where you can see it and I can spray it. It looks pretty good. Okay, so the uh, airbrush I'm going to use for this is uh, a wider HP CS, which is a about a 3, 3.5 needle, I think it is. So it's not a particularly fine one, but it's a good all round. Whoops, I've really got the model. It's a good all-round sort of um, airbrush. So again, we're at about 15 psi here. Again, I'll see if I can do this and keep it in frame for you. So the first time around, you can see I'm just um, putting a light dusting on just to get rid of any of the surface tension between the uh, primer and the plastic, you can see there. And I've got to apologise for light too, by the way. At the moment, the light in this room is terrible. I um, actually have an electrician this week that's putting new lights in for me, so next video, I promise, will look a lot better. I might just put some more on the other side too, like that. I haven't painted the tail yet, but I've patched up all the rest and I've also just put a light coat over the model itself. So one of the advantages of the Mission model, even though it's more expensive to buy, is it does have really good coverage. Not just with the primer, by the way, it works really well with their, their normal uh, range of paints as well. So I am, I am impressed with the brand, I have to say. It is a very quality product. There we go. So we'll let that dry and uh, then we can go ahead and start putting some final colours on it. Okay, so my uh, missiles are done. 
They have come out fine, but they're a bit stark white. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some just off-white colour. So I've got a little bit of light colour at white and some light colour uh, light grey. So we'll mix those together and just dull down that finish a little bit. Okay, so I've given in the okay, so I've given the front of the canopy there where I've tinted it enough time to dry. So now I'm going to dip the whole canopy in some of this AK Interactive glass coat gauzy agent. Just a tip: don't ever shake this stuff because it will create bubbles and it will ruin the finish on your canopy. It's a fairly indiscreet spot to hold it. It's pretty straightforward. Gonna be like that. Put some surplus strip off. Just put that over that so there's any dust settling on it. Have a bit of a look at the paint. So we've got four colours in this set. Dark tan, camouflage grey. Forest green and green. Uh, I think we'll start with the camouflage grey, which will be the, underneath the plane. on the painting uh, that green I just put on is their uh, green uh, is it a code yep RC083 which is a lighter green that's a noticeably thicker paint for example to the grey so I to go back and give another go to the real color thinner and this time I increased the ratio of thinner to paint so for about 10 drops of Paint, I put about seven to eight drops of thinner 
And the end result was that that sprayed on much better than anything I've done so far. So it went on really smoothly, it's quite controllable. And interesting enough, it's dry with a very matte finish, whereas all the other efforts I've done, including the top and the bottom, and the brown and the gray, have been with like a eggshell type finish. So, yeah, not too sure just yet what to make of these paints. I think there's some consistency differences between the paints as far as how thick they are and perhaps how much thinner you've got to use in them. I think you may have to eyeball it a bit more. But definitely that green went on much, much nicer. If I can replicate that same finish controllability with the next green, um, it might swing my view of the AKs, I think. I don't think you can find an easier way to do it on all this scale. That looks nice. Let's see.
Okay, well, I think we'll call it done. So this was my entry to the uh, Eggplane group build. Thanks guys for hosting it. Um, a little bit late getting it in, sorry about that. Um, you can probably tell by my voice, I'm just getting over a bit of a cold as well. And everything's been very chaotic at work, so I've had to put a lot of extra hours into to that, so I didn't get a chance to spend the time on the build that I'd hoped. <clears throat> just some, I guess, some overall impressions of, uh, of the kit. You know, it's an egg plane, so it's a very simple build in the sense there's not a lot of parts with it. But funnily enough, this was one of those kits, if I was to, um, when anyone has built kits for a period of time, I know what I'm saying. This kit just fought me every step of the way. I don't know why, but everything that could go wrong, everything that needed should just be done once, ended up having to be done twice or three times. It just seemed to be a real challenge uh, to get through this kit. And even now, there's still a few things I'm going to have to go back and fix. Um, one of the things that happened during the build is the decals, which in this kit were just awful. I, I don't know if this was a, perhaps an original release of it, uh, so they were quite old or something, but they didn't sit very well. They've silvered, and they've actually just come off. And that's under two layers of varnish, and they just came off. Um, there's even a little bit of it here that came off today. So I've ordered another one of this kit so I can pinch uh, some of the things like the stars and stripes, the stars and bars sort of thing, and put them on this one to finish it off. And I'll build the other one as a Japanese um, Phantom because it does come with the markings for the Japanese plane as well. But it was just, I don't know, it was just one of those builds where just things didn't quite work. I mean, I'm glad I did it. I think it's a really nice little model when it's finished, but yeah, I wasn't overly impressed. It didn't fit that well. There was quite a bit of sanding in it. The, yeah, okay, it's an egg plane, so detail's relative. But one of the really prominent features of a Phantom is the is the tail area with the with all the riveting and the and the bare metal finish. And I, I, you know, they sort of just sort of has to go and sort of took a pass on all that. There's no detail at all at the back where they could have put a little bit in to make it look interesting. And uh, yeah, as I said, the decals were very ordinary. So unfortunately, from a kit perspective, I I didn't find it that great. But I did enjoy building an egg plane because I haven't done one before, and I really enjoyed. The opportunity to be a part of a group build that's uh, got models from right around the world so that was fantastic the kit didn't come with a base so i decided to make my own so this is an egg carton i've done up and you can see there i've painted its uh, little runway there for the uh, for the phantom and uh, that came out quite well i was happy with that and uh, yeah i mean there's a few little things i'll have to do when those decals come in i'll have to uh, reapply those where they've broken off and I'll have to do a little bit of touch up here and there with the brush but I'm going to call it built and say so thanks guys for the uh, for the build and and I'm hoping that uh, next year we run another one and we might have a crack in another one so I'll leave you with some photos of the final build thanks for watching catch you on the next one